don't feel worthy, people that have hurt us, people that are too different from us, socioeconomically, race, racially, gender-wise, or people we've given up on, instead of seeing as witnesses and as God's divine intervention, we see it as an interruption to our life, to our well out plans, and this is how the conversation goes. This is how it's gone with me. This is God. Tell our lover and the writer of the church. God, I told her before and she has not listened. God, I waited for you patiently. You tell her, me. I know God, but I wasn't living like that. And that that includes anything. Oh, they're drinking. Look at what she got on. You know, we all said they're throwing parties every weekend. Lord, what am I supposed to do with that? And God would say, invite her anyway. And we said, okay, God, next week. I'll get to it next week. I'll do it next week. What if there isn't a next week? What, is it, what if it isn't a next week? What if it's in our laxy daisy attitude about it? They don't get a next week. Or what if we don't get a next week? What was that was our last time that we were able to sow that seed into someone else? It said, so this would be a good time to look at the book of Jonah. And Jonah wasn't simply a book about a, a prophet and a big fish. For a long time, before the last month or so, that's how I looked at Jonah. I looked at, oh, Jonah was sent to, to preach to those Ninevites, those people. Yeah, it was for the Ninevites. But guess what? It was also because of Jonah's heart. Jonah's heart, Jonah was a prophet. Jonah knew the word of God. But those Ninevites, as he would say, were his enemies. They were enemies of Israel. They had put in Israel through a lot of um, difficulties. He didn't see them as people worth saving. And that's how we look at people. That's how we look at the drug addict. That's how we look at the prostitute. That's how we look at those children who have gotten on our last nerve. That's how we look at that husband who walked out or that wife who walked out. Lord, I'm tired. I, I'm tired. But what if God had said that about us? Which I told you 99,000 times and now I'm tired. What if he said that? What if he didn't come back that one more time? You know, what if he, what if he didn't? So that's how we look at people and that was Jonah's heart. Lord, why? And then sometimes we become so frustrated with people that we don't even want to see them say, and I'm just like, you know, I know what you're going to do. I'm going to go over there, and then I'm going I'm to I'm preach to them. They're going to repent, and then you're going to say. He didn't want to see them say, Jonah's heart wasn't right. So yes, the big fish, the big whale who swallowed them up, that led him to going to do what God said, and he still didn't go with a completely rightful heart if you look at the book of Jonah, because it didn't end with a period. It ended up with a question mark. But I'm going to give you time to study that for yourself. His, his heart still wasn't completely right. So it's, it wasn't in his heart. So Jonah 1, 1 through 4 says, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amity, saying, Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it for its wickedness. It's, for it, their wickedness has come up to me. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarsh from the presence of the Lord and went to Joppa. And he found a ship going to Tarsh, so he paid the fare, and therefore, and went down into it to go with them to Tarsh from the presence of the Lord. Jonah was running. From, Jonah was running from God. God tell us to do something. Instead of doing it, we run in the opposite way because this is not our agenda. This is not what we wanted to do. We had our own plans planned out. Lord, I'll go to this set of people because they look like me. They feel like I feel about things. They dress like me. But I don't want to go over to that white neighborhood. I don't want to talk to them. They're not going to understand my struggle. They don't understand what, what being poor is about. And God is not saying for me to analyze all that. He's saying to go. Mm -hmm. Go talk to those, those moms. Tell them they can make it. Lord, I don't want to go talk to them. All they want is a welfare check. Well, I want to keep going over there telling them. I keep telling them the same thing over and over again. Judgmental is not in our heart. 
not even for some of our sisters and brothers in Christ, because we're afraid that they're going to get more than we got. Mm -hmm. Lord, if you bless them, then it might not be enough to go around for me. You know, I can't spend time praying for their family, encouraging their children, because what, what about my children? It's not in our heart. And so we have to really search our heart and see what God is, what, what we're dealing with. Is it in my heart? I don't have time. I don't want to. I don't feel like it. All of those statements are me, 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 I, I, I. But where is the glory to God? Where is the witness to Him? And because we don't see the person as God sees the person, witnessing to them again is an interruption. And it says, insignificant person, insignificant task equals interruption. When we don't see the person as important, when we don't see the task <coughs> as important, then we don't see what God telling us to do for them as important. Because if I value the person, I value the task, then it's an intervention. It's just like the phone call you get when you're going out the door. You're all dressed and you're ready to go for the day. The phone rings. If you pick it up and it's a bill collector saying, hey, you owe me $25,000. You know, when can you get that payment in the mail? You're mad. That's an interruption. I'm on my way out of the door. You don't understand why I'm telling you I have to go. I don't have time to take care of that. That's an interruption, right? But phone rings you on your way out of the door and it's, hey, Sister Detrenda, God laid it on my heart to bless you with $2,500. It's no longer interruption. <laughs> Lord, I thank you. It's divine intervention, right? <laughs> so that's how we look at things. So if it's, in, if it's an insignificant person, okay, my child is in trouble. I want pastor to go. But somebody else's child is in trouble. It's not so important because it's not mine. So am I going to go to the hospital? Am I, am, am, matter of fact, if I know about it, am I even going to say, Pastor, so-and-so child is in the hospital? Some of us won't even take the time to do that. You know, we'll know. We'll know what sister or brother is going through. And we won't even speak to Pastor on their behalf. But every time we have a need, every time we have a hurt, every time we have a boo-boo, we want somebody there for us. And I mean, this all comes from life experience. I've learned this because I don't go to a lot of family functions. I used to, but I got so I don't go. And um, then it would be my birthday and people wouldn't show up. <laughs> so, that's so well, you know what? Ain't no need to be mad because if you don't go to nobody's birthday party, why do you think somebody gonna show up at your birthday party? You know, so I had to start looking at it like that. And I would even tell my grandmother, she'd be like, nobody well, you don't go see anybody. If you don't go see anybody, you don't witness, you don't visit, you don't comfort, then when it's your turn, don't get angry when nobody shows up. Just say, okay, this is the bed I made for myself. Okay, be, and that's how we are. We want people to feed us. We want to be nervous. When people are so good into our life, but when do you show up for somebody else? And when does somebody don't have, not have to beg you to show up? Because if I have to ask you over and over again to do something for me, then I'm going to say I can do it by myself. You know what I'm saying? If you see me hurting and you never call, then I don't expect you to show up. So that's relationship. Witnessing builds relationship. And it has to be in our heart. It has to be in our heart. We all know God called Jonah to go to Nineveh and warn them of impending doom. According to history, the Ninevites were enemies of Israel. Jonah had no desire to compel them to repent and to return to God. Therefore, he ran. Now, we may shake our heads at Jonah, but truth be told, we often fail to be witness for the same reason. It's simply not in our heart. We want all the mercies of God. But so often, we don't want them afforded to other people. We don't want that person to break our heart to come to God. We want God to get them. Get them, God. Get them and get them now. That's what we were saying. Hurry up and get them. Those neighbors who, every time you turn around, having that party next door. 
you know, we're not going to take them a cake or a card or anything. We're saying, Lord, can you move them out of the neighborhood? And if you can't move them out of the neighborhood, can you let the house burn down? <laughs> can you do something? I'm tired of being up, you know? That's how our heart goes. Because if we don't watch it, our heart is fickle. One minute, you know, it's, it's for certain people, or we love them, we want the best in the other people. Not so much. Not so much. We, so we have to search our own hearts and be honest. You know, we get tired of our children. Lord, I told her. I told her not to see that guy. I done prayed for her. I done went to the hospital with her. I did this with her. I set up with her. Lord, I'm just cutting her off. Don't call. Don't ask me for no money. Lord, I'm just, I'm just cutting her off. What if God did that with you? He could say, I woke you up this morning. You didn't say thank you. I brought you safely down the road. You never parted your lips. I made sure you had clothes on your back this morning. Did you tell me thank you? I put those beautiful clouds in the air, the birds that were singing, all this for you, and you didn't say thank you. I'm done. Where will we be? What will we have? But we want God's mercy, right? We want God's grace. But we're not willing to afford that to somebody else. I'm never letting that person back in my house again. It's not the way God intended it to be. And witnesses is, is all about what's in our heart. We fail to realize that people's souls are important to God, and we've been commissioned to witness. And many times we can do that simply by telling our story. So ask God for divine appointments. Every day I ask God for a divine appointment. Because if God has gives me a divine appointment to witness, guess what? He's already tilled the heart. He's already so whether I just hand them a card with a scripture on it, whether I just say good morning and give them a hug, whether I go into details about the goodness of God, he's already applied the heart. And Pastor already said, one person may sow the seed, somebody else water, and God gives the increase. You know why we get angry with people? I can tell you why. Because once I sold this seed, I want the increase right then. I, um, I told you about my, my son's girlfriend, and she's here. And so I apologize to her openly because I already told them. I said, um, my son is in college, and she moved out. She didn't have a place to stay, and she said, you know, I'm going stay. And I said, yeah, because he's in college, so there's no shacking, none of that going on. So it's all good. And um, I said, yeah. But I said, you got to go to church with me. <laughs> you go into the crystal. <laughs> and she said, Mom, but your church makes me nervous. You go on with me. And I'm sure that it went on and on and on because I was insisting on having my way. Well, she got missing in action and I haven't seen her for days. <laughs> so I had to text her, you okay? <laughs> you know? <laughs> but we do that. We do that because we want to see the fruit right then and there. I did it with my husband. I was new to save. So then I was really hot and on fire for God. Everybody I had to tell about Jesus. Everybody I wanted to know. Pastor could barely talk without me running up taking the mic from his hand because I wanted to tell. I wanted to tell and I remember that he was really patient. He didn't rebuke me. He would just give it to me. And I, would, I just wanted everybody to know. But I wanted to see the fruit right now. So I was thumping. Thumping. You're going to hell. If you don't do it like this, you're going to hell. You're going to hell. Many times when I should have just shut my mouth. I should have been more loving, more caring, more nurturing. I wasn't. I was thumping. Got to get it in. So it, it put that wall up. And one day he looked at me and he said, even if I wasn't what I am, I wouldn't want to be what you are. How? When I had the glory of God down on the inside. When I knew of God's goodness and His mercy, when I knew how God had changed my life, how could somebody look at me and say that? Because I wasn't doing it right. Because I wasn't doing it God's way, I was doing it the tremendous way. So our heart has to be right before God. So I asked for God's divine appointments. Yes, sir. So, would you like to close out that? <laughs> so, I just want you to continue reading, and we have a chance, we're finished, but everybody has the flyers. But I really appreciated this opportunity to stand before you.
Um, and I thank God, and I hope something that's been said between me and Pastor has been encouraging to your heart. Could we stand for prayer, please? Amen. 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 Am